Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to be doing some spring pots using IOD molds and stamps. You can find a full product list in the description of this video and all your crafting needs on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Let's get started. I bought these terracotta pots from our local hardware store and thought that I would give them an update for spring. For the first and largest pot, my first step is to roll out some Jovi air dry clay. I first dusted my plastic surface with some cornstarch and now I'm using a rolling pin to roll it out. I'm then molding the clay gently to the shape of the pot and I'm going to add a strong wood glue to adhere it and then I'm going to trim off any excess down the bottom. There wasn't quite enough clay in the first amount that I rolled so I am going to roll out another section of the clay, repeating the same steps as before, dusting it with cornstarch, using a rolling pin to roll it out flat. I want it to be about 2mm thick so not too thin. I'm then positioning the second lot of clay to work out how I want it to sit. I've actually just broken off the excess there, I'm moulding it with my fingers and then I am using that same wood glue to attach it. I'm just using my fingers and pressing carefully to blend the two sections together. Next, I'm going to be using IOD's Spriggs stamp. This is a beautiful stamp that I've used before in the traditional sense, but today we are going to use these stamps to make impressions. My clay is still wet, so I am carefully pressing the stamp into my clay to create an impression. I'm pressing hard enough that I get that impression, but not so hard that I go all the way through to the terracotta pot itself. And as you can see, when I pull it away, it leaves a great impression. So I'm going to repeat this process and I'm going to grab the different elements from the sprig stamp and just work out how I want them arranged and then carefully press each one into the clay. I'm using the sprig stamp today, but you could definitely use any of IOD's other stamps for this sort of a project to get a lovely impression. It really is up to you and the look you're going for. If I found that some of the backing outline of the stamp was imprinted onto the clay, I just used my fingers to smooth that out and make it less obvious. Usually when I'm working with clay, it's with molds and more often than not, I do tend to paint them while they're still wet. I just find I get less cracking this way. However, for this project, it is a large amount of clay and I don't mind getting the cracks for this effect. So I am going to give this 24 hours to completely dry before I come in with my next step. Once my clay had completely dried, I am coming in with Dixie Belle's Endless Shore Silk Mineral Paint and I am giving the pot a good coat all over. I am not going too heavy. I do not want that paint to affect the impressions I've created. Dixie Belle Silk Mineral Paint has a built-in top coat, which is perfect for our next step. I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's Au Naturel Voodoo Gel Stain, and I'm going to cover this pot completely. I'm going to make sure that it gets into all of the details left by the stamps and all those cracks and crevices. Voodoo Gel Stain is water-based, so it's very easy to work with and acts very similarly to a glaze. While this product is still wet, I'm going to come in with a paper towel and I'm going to dab and wipe away the excess. Mm -hmm. 
As I'm doing this, I'm loving the hints of the Endless Shore base colour that we used before peeking through. When this coat is dry, I'm going to come in with Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain and I'm going to apply this to the whole thing. Again, I'm making sure that I have enough of the product in all of the details and the cracks. I'm then grabbing a paper towel and again, I'm wiping off the excess. You can see I'm wiping off a lot more than I did with the All Naturel and I'm loving the color combination here and how the Tobacco Road is sitting in all of those details. I'm also adding some of the Tobacco Road to the bottom of the pot and the inside as well. Before this coat was completely dry, I decided to grab a wet wipe and to wipe back just a little bit more of that Tobacco Road just to lighten it up just a little bit more. Finally, I'm going to add some of Dixie Belle's white wax all over the pot. I am loving the hint of white here and how it's catching all of the details. I think it really adds to that aged effect, but it's really gonna help fit in with a bit more of a neutral uh, decor style. And here's our first finished spring pot. I'm so happy with how this turned out. I think that it looks lovely and vintage and perfect for spring. I do turn the pot around as I am filming these finished product shots so that you can see that this would just look beautiful in the center of the table. It is just lovely on all sides. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments. For our second project, we're going to be using the He Loves Me mold and the Laurel mold. I'm first dusting the molds that I'm going to be using with cornstarch and then I am pressing Jovi air dry clay into each of the molds and then using my thumb along the micro rim to press off any excess. This is a really, really pretty mold, very, very easy to use. I'm going to cast quite a few here so that I've got a few to play with and arrange on my pot. I'm also going to be casting the very sweet small bee from the Laurel Mold. Now that I've got a bunch of castings ready, I'm going to start gluing them down. I'm using a strong wood glue, making sure I apply a generous amount, and then I'm pressing it against the pot and molding it. You wanna do this while your clay is still wet, otherwise you will find that the clay breaks and cracks. So I'm just arranging them however I feel looks good. You can do this in any way that you like. It really is up to you. You just wanna make sure that you use a good quality glue so that your castings stay on the pot. I'm using JV Air Dry Clay today, but you could always use resin if you prefer to work with that. I just recommend that you do this as soon as you pull the castings out because the resin will only be flexible for a short amount of time. Otherwise, you could always heat them up in the microwave or with a heat gun. If you do not have IOD's molds that I'm using today, the He Loves Me mold and the Laurel mold, you can still achieve a similar look. IOD also has a beautiful roses mold and also a sunflower mold, or even if you've got something just a bit more generic at home, you could definitely still recreate this look. You don't have to have the exact products that I have today. I'm just giving you some ideas of how you can decorate something that we've probably all got at home, which is these lovely terracotta pots. Once I have all of my castings glued down, I'm going to use a baby wipe to wipe up any excess glue. I gave these castings 24 hours as well because I knew that I was going to be doing a lot of different effects on these and it's best to wait until they're completely dry. Next, I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's Burlap Chalk Mineral Paint and I am painting the entire pot with two good coats. 
I'm a big fan of burlap. Let me know in the comments if you've used this color. I think it is a lovely neutral without being too boring. And it's definitely a color that you can layer and build upon. I think it's just a really versatile tone and it was fun to work with something else other than a cream. With Easter just around the corner, I am using a lot of florals on this video, but you could always go with different molds and this is a really fun way, very easy way to decorate your pots. Once my paint is dry, I'm going to seal the entire pot with Dixie Belle's Gloss Clear Coat. I'm then going to grab Dixie Belle's Rebel Yellow and a small artist brush and I'm going to paint the interior of each of the little daisy flowers and on the bee as well. I'm then also grabbing Dixie Belle's Cotton Chalk Mineral Paint and a small artist brush. I'm adding it to the petals of the daisies and then I'm using a wet wipe to actually wipe back some of that white so that the burlap is showing through a bit more. I'm going to repeat this process on each of the flowers and also on the bee's wings as well. This is going to give this pot a lovely vintage aged look. I'm then going to use some of Dixie Belle's Cactus Silk Mineral Paint on the leaves and repeating that process where I wipe back some of it and then I am grabbing some of Dixie Belle's Caviar Chalk Mineral Paint and I'm adding some details to the bee and also the center of the daisies. When these are dry, I'm going to water down some of my Tobacco Voodoo gel stain and I am going to add it to the pot and then I'm going to wipe back a lot of the excess with a wet wipe. I just want to give this a bit of a vintage feel, but I don't want it to be too dark. So you can see that it's really just being left around the edges of the castings and in certain areas where I've gone a little bit darker. Next, I'm going to be using the Vintage Textures stamp, specifically the Crackle element. I'm going to add some of my black IOD permanent ink and I'm just gonna press it lightly and randomly on the pot. I don't want this to be uniform. I just want it to be random. And then I did grab a wet wipe to wipe back some of the intensity of the color. Finally, I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's White Wax and you can see that I'm working it into all of the details. I just wanna tone this down a little bit. So I'm adding it to the entire pot and then I'm going to use a paper towel to wipe back some of the excess and also a baby wipe to wipe it off some of the color as well. So here you can see I did make a little bit of a mistake. I grabbed the wrong brush that had the cotton paint on it, but in the end I just embraced it. I added a little bit to the bottom as well, and then I added the white wax to try and blend the look in. And here's our second finished pot. I think this one turned out very, very sweet. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. For our final pot, we're going to be using the Laurel Mold. I'm going to be using the thinner Laurel elements from this mold. I am dusting them with cornstarch first and then I am rolling the clay into a sausage sort of shape and then I'm pressing it into the mold with my thumb and using that micro rim to get a clean edge. I'm then going to glue each of the castings onto my pot with a strong wood glue and you can see that I do actually have to join these and position them and on my third casting I did have to rip a little bit off and I'm also casting the smaller bee from the mold as well. Next I'm going to mix some of Dixie Belle's Sea Spray Texture Additive with Cotton Chalk Mineral Paint. I'm stirring it really well. I did lose some of the footage, sorry guys, but basically I stippled it and dabbed it all over the pot. Pretty straightforward. And then I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's Au Naturel Voodoo Gel Stain. I'm applying it, but then I'm using a wet wipe to actually dab and wipe a lot of it off. I want some of that cotton to show through and I want the peaks of the Sea Spray to really stand out. Yeah. 
Next, I'm going to apply some of the Cactus Silk Mineral Paint with a small artist brush. I'm dabbing it along the edges of the pot. This is to mimic moss. And then I'm using a paper towel and a wet wipe to wipe back the excess. So I just want a hint of green. I think it just looks like a lot more realistic when you do this. So I'm just going to work my way around the pot, adding that cactus paint, wiping it off with the wet wipe to give the appearance of moss. I really hope that you're loving this look. I definitely am. And I think that this would also look really great on an old vase or an old jug. I think this is quite a versatile look that you could apply to a lot of home decor. I'm also going to add some to the details of the castings that we glued down. Again, it's really random. It doesn't matter how you do this. It's up to you how much or how little you add if you're going to give this a go. So remember, if this look isn't exactly for you, you could always use different colored glazes, different colored paint washes or wax to turn your pot into something that fits in with your home decor. This is just one example. Next, I'm going to add the same cotton color to the bottom of the pot and repeat some of the same steps to tie it in. I wanted to age this a little bit more, so I'm coming in with some watered down Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain. I'm adding it and then I'm wiping it off. I just want a hint of the darkness. Again, we're going for a aged finish. I'm then going to spray my pot with Easy Peasy Spray Wax. I'm doing this for a few reasons. One, it will seal my piece, but it also acts as a way for me to add Dixie Dirt, which is a powder form product that you add to basically like what it sounds, make it look like your piece is a bit dirty, which I thought went perfect with this pot. And the Easy Peasy Spray Wax, while it is still wet, is a great foundation for that so that the dirt will stick and not come off. So I'm just going to randomly apply that and then wipe it off with a paper towel. And I'm just going to add it in areas where I feel like dirt will naturally accumulate. I'm using charcoal Dixie Dirt, but it also comes in the color Earth, which has more of a brown tone, and the color Ash, which has a bit more of a gray tone. I picked the charcoal here because I felt it looked a little bit more realistic. Next, I'm also spraying the inside of the pot so that I can add a little bit more dirt and seal the piece. And here's our finished third and final pot. I really love how this turned out. I think it's giving off major French country vibes. Let me know what you think of this one in the comments. I hope that you really enjoyed today's video. I had a lot of fun taking plain terracotta pots and adding molds and stamps and seeing them transform into beautiful spring decor. Let me know in the comments which was your favorite out of these three. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and share it out to someone that you think might enjoy it. If you haven't already, I would love it if you could hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our projects. You can find all of the products used in today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.